So I'm gonna start where I, where I always start. So first thing first, how are you? Doing good. <laughs> Never been better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, no. I mean, yeah. We had. A We've been having a great year, actually. Yeah, we had a tornado over here, a pandemic, uh, ride, <laughs> street, doing fantastic. How is this? Um, well, it is a crazy world at the moment. Not at the moment, it has been, I suppose, for a couple of years now. But, um, how, are you, how are you coping with kind of the lack of uh, being able to play live and to, to kind of express that creativity that you have? Well, I've been drawing pictures. You want to see a couple of them? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you real quick. Okay, I turn around. There's my dog. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. That's and then and then I drew uh, the other dog we're babysitting. It's Tolly. <laughs> yeah. So it helps just a little bit. <laughs> um, so is it, I, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you got. Is it, is it one of those things where you have to kind of uh, try to keep your mind off things and just uh, find things to do? Or are you, because I also hear from some musicians, they're actually busier now than they were in the months before this whole pandemic. I know, Trevor, you've done a bunch of things. Um, I haven't had that many Zoom calls. I've had like a couple and a couple interviews, but not much. But Trevor, I know you've been pretty busy, right? Yeah, I've had uh, quite a few awkward Zoom calls, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm getting used to that process. And uh, you know, for us, we have uh, a single out right now at radio, so it's still good to um, deliver unique content to radio stations and get them on the phone. And at least we're able to do that via you know what we're doing right now, Skype or sure. Zoom. Uh, but you know, we're, we're, I'm really missing the physical element of playing in front of people and reciprocating that energy that you feel at a live show. I feel like we took a lot of time to get this album done and that's taxing mentally. Mm. And then when the album's done and you're moving into just playing things live, it's just like a physical act and where you kind of just have muscle memory and it's a great release for me. And I love that part and we haven't been able to do that currently. So, you know, just, sure. it, it's frustrating. Mm. Well, let's talk about some more uh, fun things then, um, which is the album itself. Now, I think the album itself is about kind of, uh, thinking back of, of uh, better days, or, or I don't know if better days is the right word, but memories, good memories that you've had uh, from way back when. So I have to get the title, Vest Vestivia Hills. Um, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. What kind of place is that? Um, it is a suburban uh, city in Alabama. It's right south of Birmingham. Um, basically, so... The Stave Hills is the start of the Appalachian Mountains, right? It's the very bottom. The hills are the, like the very, very beginning of what turns into the, you know, the Appalachians in Tennessee and, you know, through West you know, and Virginia all the way. Um, and it's a really nice place. They've got a really good school there. It's wild. You know, they were, our football team was the rebels. Uh, um, and I think they changed that a few years ago, but I mean, it, it, it's a wild place because you've got a pool of very smart people in the middle of, you know, I don't want to say, um, I don't want to say the wrong thing here. Um, in Alabama, basically. And Alabama has some very, you know, conservative people. Sure. So you've got, you've got this just wild dichotomy of, of, intelligence mixed with um uh, Trevor can you help me out here <laughs> I'm trying not to say the wrong thing um yeah it's it's very uh, I would say insulated it's yes. uh Vestavia is um a great was a great school and a, a really fun place to grow up but we were uh it's like the definition of white privilege you know yeah. it's very 
very yes. safe, which would be, you know, a great place to raise kids if you were the right skin tone and mm. had the right, you know, bank account. So <laughs> we, we, we were, we were lucky to, 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 to go to a good school. But I mean, when, uh, when we were going there, we didn't realize how insulated it was. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and lucky for us, you know, with all the, the social injustice going on, like we got to see like both, like at least that side of it, you know, right, and, and right. like, like Birmingham, Birmingham city is like almost entirely African-American and all. So back in the civil rights movement, all the white people in Birmingham moved over the hill right over red mountain uh and uh it's called white flight they all moved over the mountain started mm -hmm. their own municipalities and that's what the hills is it's one of those right. there's several okay so does that sorry that's a long <laughs> that's a very long answer to your question, but. no but it is uh, it's interesting to hear uh, that perspective especially with uh, what's going on because um well I, I was asking more of kind of how because i, I know spencer you're from kentucky right Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, but but kind of how that that uh, musicality and creativity was cultivated, and Spencer, this, this also goes for you, uh, where, where where you grow up. How how was was uh, your interest in music kind of cultivated? And well, for uh, for the guys from Fasavia, then uh, did you want to get out of there and then get to a place like Nashville, to where you could make music, uh, maybe a little bit more in a broader sense? Uh, for, for me, I, I grew up like 45 minutes uh, north of Nashville, um, and it's it's a small college town called Bowling Green, but it's still a pretty, um, th there's a lot, the, the general population has quite an interest in music. Uh, Kentucky has a good history of, of music, and our proximity to Nashville, kind of, we were always going to shows. Um, so a lot of the the young kids uh, get into music, playing playing instruments, going to shows, uh, and I mean that's how I basically got into it. And you know what, watching MTV and and all all of that, and um, started going to Nashville a lot to go to concerts. Um, I knew I knew pretty early on that I wanted to do music, uh, and luckily. You know, I mean, I did, I didn't, I wasn't like the best high school student. So like my opportunities for colleges weren't, uh, uh, vast, but, uh, James uh Spencer. do what, James. uh, but it was, you know, it was kind of perfect because Nashville was a, a very close by option that is, you know, the music capital of the country or at least one of two. And, uh, so it made it made a lot of sense, and uh, I actually met Trevor and Tommy uh, the very first night uh, of school, or uh, of school hadn't even started. It was like you know the three days before classes start. The orientation type stuff. Yeah, and we I think we all kind of went to one orientation thing and then just skipped the rest. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, that's so true. I, I I think I just I was like screw this, and I just took my guitar down to the stair steps of the of the dorm we all lived in and i was like well you know i'm i'm a pretty reserved person but i was like at least if i have a guitar maybe it'll attract some people mm. uh, <laughs> and i came up to you i think started we started jamming yeah see i'm i'm not reserved um <laughs> i'll i'll talk to a wall um and you know part of the social distancing thing that's been the hardest part on me is because i'm used to social interaction so i started just calling people like all right. the time i'll probably talk to you every day Trevor, right that's right. Yeah. Every day around 4 p.m. I not yeah. expect a call. I've I call noticed, noticed we, have, we have a lot more phone conversations than we've ever yeah, had. Yeah, I call Spencer a lot, too. He only answers about half the time. Um, <laughs> Depend if I have a commitment in the next hour, I'm like, I can't answer this. Time. Well, I, so Spencer, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I remember, I don't know if I made you a fake ID or you already had your own, but I remember, like, you weren't talking very much, and we were like, well, Spencer will probably want to go down to one of these clubs with us. So I can't remember if I made you a fake ID or you already had your own. You might have already had your own. I was like, okay, this guy's cool. Um, <laughs> and, and, and we went down to some club that's not there anymore. And after a couple of beers, you just wouldn't stop talking. <laughs> it was, yeah. 
and nothing's changed. <laughs> no, no, yeah. <laughs> no, but, yeah. Well, getting into the album then a little bit, because uh, Hometown Heroes, uh, when, you, when you think about these, these kind of early memories or fond memories, um, what are the ones that stick out? And one of the things I suppose that, that is touched upon in that song as well is, is that we romanticize in a way uh, our history. Our, our kind of own experience. So, so how, how are you looking back at those early days now? That's uh, really good that you, that you kind of captured that sentiment because that's exactly what we were going for. That, you know, the further away you get from your memories, the, the fuzzier they get and the kind of warmer mm -hmm. and like less defined, but more romanticized, more idealized. Uh, we, you know, like we just got into that hole right now talking about the first day we met. I mean, the details are like generally accurate, but who knows if like all those things really happen. So that's, right. we were just kind of trying to tease out those concepts of, you know, creating history, remembering history, and then glorifying it in, in a song and, and really just kind of celebrating friendship at the same time. Because of the, what year was this when you uh, first attended college? Uh, 2002. Okay, so, so it's been a while. So, yeah, 18 uh, years. <laughs> so this is an open forever uh, for each of you, but is there one thing you can tell me about one of the other that, that you've learned from them over the years, either personally or musically? Um, from Spencer, I've definitely learned uh, to be a little bit more patient. Um, and, um, so like back, back when, back when we first started the band, um, uh, you know, I kind of wore as many hats as I could and like, I just keep the money we made, uh, cash in a drawer. Um, uh, and I was not very good about handling it. And I was like, you know, Spencer's pretty good with handling money. Uh, so maybe I should let him do it. And he's did, he's done it ever since. So. I learned now, a lot now, from now it's in a safe instead of a drawer, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, I think. I mean, I think. I think overall, uh, the the fact that we've been uh, together for so long is really a testament to, um, you know, the type of people that each of us is. Not in any specific sense, but it's just it's hard to keep any enterprise sure. going, much less one that's as tumultuous. Uh, and just difficult to navigate as something in the music business. But I think we had a lot, we, one thing we had going for us is we started uh, relatively young and, as, as a, and instead of, you know, trying one thing for four years and then trying another thing and then before you know it, you're, you know, you're 30, we, we found one thing and we weren't really good at it for a long time, you know, and, and, but we just, it was all about <laughs> persistence and perseverance and figuring things out. Uh, which has kind of been our story. It's like just if you start and then learn and always adapt and evolve, you know, sometimes it's that that path and sticking with one thing takes you a lot farther than all the time. Like you know, stop, sure. stop and start, stop and start. Sure. Our trajectory has kind of just been this slow, uh, constantly growing, constantly evolving thing. Because that's that's an interesting point as well where. Uh, you, where you are now, um, album six, and kind of having the success uh, successes that you've had, it it, it had it was a long road to get there, uh, so to say. So, so when you think about that grind that you had to endure, do, do you think about it now in a very idealistic way, or uh, do you still kind of uh, see it for what it was at the time? I I yeah. think about that. Go ahead, Trim. Oh, I was just gonna say. Uh, it, it's a little bit of both. You know, we, we look back to the van days when we were driving in a, like an old church van, driving ourselves. And we look back and I mean, it, it must have been so exhausting, but I, I, it was also exhilarating at the same time. I mean, it was, it was yeah. great. We were uh, learning about each other. We were learning about our, our own musicality and our instruments and uh, you know, I, I think th there were times where we definitely struggled and we got, you know, the van was broken into, we had, uh, you know, struggles along the way where 
you know, a song didn't really hit as, as hard as we wanted it to and, and had uh, trouble at the radio game aspect of the, of the industry. But uh, yeah, I mean, we definitely romanticize the past still, even those, those struggles. We have a, a bad summer tour that we went on and like, I think it was 2008 or nine that we uh, called disaster tour. <laughs> you know, it's just, it was a disaster of a tour. It was like, maybe, you know, we can count the people that actually attended the shows on, on our fingers. It was, it was bad and we lost a lot of money, but I think ultimately <laughs> we, we came out of it stronger as a mm. cohesive band. You know, we started writing better songs because of it. We were like, mm -hmm. something needs to change. We need to evolve if we're going to continue to do this. And, uh, going back to your previous question, I wanted to say that, you know, we, we, the reason we're still together is we all have that shared vision of, we want to continue to play music together. Mm. Well, because of, yeah, the, with what you just said, I, I thought I always like to talk about where the drive comes from and in those hard times, is that kind of what the drive is that just simply you want to make music together? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, but th there's ambi I mean, you know, there's ambition within everyone to sure. be a successful musician, you know, so I mean, and you have to have that like it. So to do anything in the music business, uh, you know, specifically on the on the artistic side, it's like if you don't want it extremely bad and work on it 100% of the time, you're not going to go anywhere. Like you really just have to have an outrageous drive and ambition to succeed because there's a million people that want to do it. Uh, and it's not, it's not always about pure talent. I mean, it's, it's hundred percent not about pure talent. A lot of the time it's about <coughs> persistence yeah. and drive. Yeah. So I think we all share that. I mean, there's not like a lazy person in the band, you know, it's like that there's, you see a lot of bands and, you know, kind of, we, we've come across tons of bands that, we, we've just kind of seen stagnate or float around and we're like, man, we couldn't do it. Like, you know, if we're not like really pounding it and like going for it, we're, we're unhappy, you know? Yeah. So whatever that means, it might, might means that we're running up against a wall for a year and not going any, you know, but like, unless, unless you're pushing that hard, you know, you're really not going to break through. Right. Yeah. If you, if you hit that wall enough, you'll end up breaking it. I mean, like, uh, so Robin, so like every now and then <clears throat> when I have friends over from out of town, I'll start playing them all these bands, um, uh, that are from Nashville that didn't make it. Right. Mm. Um, and I'm, I don't want to name any names cause that's not, I mean, I, I'd like to point them out, but they, they're not doing anything anymore. Spencer loves how i the bomb. Right. And they've had some success, but they're they're not like touring nationally or anything. They're not really playing anymore. It's a phenomenal band, uh, and there's tons of them. And it's mainly the, the the one constant that I see with all of them is that they didn't really tour much out of Nashville. They wanted to kind of break from here. Whereas we decided, okay, we're going to go start making a name for ourselves around around the southeast, uh, in Alabama and Georgia, you know, Kentucky and and elsewhere and that really kind of gave us some footing to where we could kind of break out but it was a grind i mean it was like i mean i remember i was working a day job uh four days a week and they trevor and spencer everybody else would pick me up from my office with my tie on and then we go tour thursday through sunday and i go back to work on monday morning and it was just like this grind and grind and grind and that's what you have to have and you know i think about it a lot because we haven't been able to play any shows. I'm like, would I do that again? I'd be like, I'd, I'd go tour like that in a second right now. I would just love to go play. Right, so, fair enough. And yeah. going into uh, kind of pushing the boundaries, like you say, um, I, I wrote down a quote, I think it was from, from the bio, but uh, sometimes we've held back on taking uh, big sonic risks out of fear that it wouldn't fit. And uh, it also said kind of now you're at a place uh, where you don't, have that fear as much anymore so with a silver dream in mind then um what allowed you to be even more uh, explorative in in terms of the sonic landscapes that you use uh, i think uh, again again in confidence um that that comes from one just having done several albums in a row that i think have each progressively gotten a little uh, broader sonically and, and uh, gone into 
more uh, adventurous places with with each one and and seeing each of those get more successful as we did that mm. that wasn't turning people off it was in fact bringing more people in um, and then uh, I, I don't know I think we just you know once it's just kind of a point where you know you get a confidence where you might have used to say oh we got to do it this way this is the right way to do things mm -hmm. to make a record this is how you make a record and you just realize the more you make things and learn that uh you know there's not one right way to do anything to, to especially when it comes to making uh recordings uh and just it, it takes time and wisdom to develop that and to like know what the actual things you're looking for are uh as opposed to some rule book of, of how to make recordings um so I, I don't know, and and maybe you know maybe the the that's more like something we have now. I mean, it, it it's hard to go into too specifically without talking about stuff from from the album that nobody sure. heard. Sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see them, but that confidence, I suppose, that uh, like you like you said, that, that must be important. Uh, but is that something that comes with age uh, in a way as well, that you can and experience? yeah definitely um and i mean and just learning i mean like you know all the all the struggles we've talked about you know like being unsuccessful for years and, and touring you know to no one for years we're still struggling just having different things you know it's like it's not like making an album's easy it's no matter like you can come it's always like mind-blowing to me we'll come off of making an album and then you go like day one to make the next one and it's like how did we ever finish an album ever it's, it's like seems so daunting and and once you're in it like like this thing's never going to be done you know and it's like eventually it's done you just you know but like the struggle of doing that is really taxing and hard and takes a long time and there's a lot of days where you're like this sucks like a musical yeah. makes it, you know and it, you kind of you, you're it's not easy it's never easy and if it is no. easy you're probably you're probably not trying hard enough but you know so true. Um, but, the, but the more you do it, it you know it, it just becomes more like uh routine of knowing that every day is going to be a struggle and you know if you just internalize that and be like this is going to be hard and then hopefully at the end of the day i'd be like yeah, we made progress then you know you're in a good spot what is the payoff so to say that is is that the, the first time that you hold a record in your hand or that hour a day that you're on stage playing for people i i like i like to run the music by friends right um like my fiance's brother, right? I played him a couple of songs. Um, and this is, God, this is like last year. <laughs> and he loved them. I was like, wow, he likes it. Cool. Okay. <laughs> like we got something like, cool. I'm not alone here. And like playing it for other people and seeing them light up is what gets me going. Okay. And I, I assume for the rest of you, it's the same. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's like, there's like f finishing the album always feels great. Like being like, you know, here, here's a mastered version of the album. It's not going to change anymore is, is like a huge accomplishment. <laughs> lots, lots of times, like, it's really not to like a year later after you've been touring it, people have familiarized yourself that you really see what the album even is. It's like your perception at that point is like, oh, okay, that's what this album is. It's like you hear it completely differently once it's out in the world mm. and other people are reacting to it. Like right now, it's this thing that we just have, that, you know, like 10 people have heard and it's in our heads. Right. We have a perception of it, but like it like takes on this whole other quality when it's out in the ether. And it's like, there's people listening to this, you know, somewhere else and they're having a reaction to a song. And then you play shows and like a year goes by and you're like, the songs that have infiltrated people's lives and have become a part of your fans lives and then you're like oh that's what that album is and, and your perception might be totally different of what you thought you made right yeah so i agree just to jump in yeah i think it takes about a year or so of of touring it once it's done uh and, and that moment that aha moment for me is like when on this album, like we had maybe four shows this year before the pandemic hit, mm. and we started to sound check play uh, Hometown Heroes. And for me, like the first time running it through and it sounds good, you're like, okay, we made a, a good record. You know, if you don't have to try too hard when, it, when you're live, like mm. selling it to people, it's just a good song. That's, that's the moment for me that I can tell, you know, that all that, that hard work has paid off. Right. 
And finally, then, because um, I just want to mention this, this, this stream is uh, when it's with multiple people, it's up for 40 minutes. So if I cut out in the, in a while, then that's what happened. So I just wanted to mention that. But um, uh, we talked about the themes a little bit, and, and Silver Dream, uh, Silver Dream is kind of this, 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 uh, yeah, this, this romantic look at the past. But, but. What can you tell or reveal about the, the album in, in the sense of uh, what you hope that people kind of will get out of it or, or do with it? Um, I mean, one thing that I've, I've thought about with it is um, I, I think uh, a lot of people are going to be able to see themselves in, in the songs, in specific songs. Like, um, you know, we, we might have written the lyrics or songs think, talking about specific things to us, you know, we might've had some communal stories or something that we were using as reference point for lyrics. Right. But I think when anybody listens to them, they'll be able to be like, man, I feel this, you know, and, and it'll make them think about uh, something in their life or, uh, you know, ways that they're feeling. So I think people are going to be able to take the songs and sort of apply them to their situation and, and see, you know, their images and their life in the songs, uh, which I'm excited about. Cause you know, in that process, you kind of, as the people that wrote the songs, we get to see like a new life come from them, you know, from sure. people's interpretations of them. Yeah. Like, like light up. <laughs> like I know it's been a hard year. Yeah. It's been a hard year for me too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we need to release that. Oh. Yeah, and and with hometown <laughs> heroes too, <clears throat> with the with the the first single, you know, we're we're hoping that people insert their own high school experience or you know old friendship in into the song. You know, like we we wrote the lyrics um, broad enough to to where you know it's not we're not we don't want to insert specific memories. We just kind of want to elicit their their yeah. romanticized memories. Is, is there, a, to, to final off that, because I just did get a warning that it might uh, close down, this, uh, but, but, but to end on, is, is there one interpretation of, of one of your songs that you've heard that, that, was, that you found very interesting or that stuck with you? Well, yeah, I mean, Hometown Heroes, we released it and like three weeks later, there was a tornado in, in our hometown. So okay. people started, people interpreted that as, we were writing about the first responders or the scientists or people that are, you know, that step up in times of emergencies. And, you know, that's, that's not what it was intended for, but like who's, we're not the people to say how to, how to interpret these songs. Right. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. And thank you very much, Robin. Thanks, thank Robin.